Hello, and welcome to our session, Community by Design, an Examination of School Design for Social Justice and Inclusion, a case study of Portland Public Schools Grant High School Modernization in Portland, Oregon. I am Elisa Laverifon, an Associate Principal with Malam Architects, and today my colleague Brian Holler and I will explore how Grant High School's redesign has addressed legacies of disadvantage and how by designing for all, Grant has realized a more inclusive environment where students feel welcome, accepted, and connected. We will start with a video tour to provide an overview of the modernization, which will highlight a highly successful year-long public engagement process that uncovered how students were experiencing social injustices that persisted due to the building's architecture and organization, despite the school's progressive commitment to equity. Following the video, we will talk with Dr. Carol Campbell, the former principal, and Madison Roach, a former student, who will discuss their return to the modernized Grant High School and how space can impact social justice and equity to support a positive learning community. So let's get started. The modernization of Grant High School in Portland, Oregon, proves how bold spatial solutions can address legacies of disadvantage, prejudice, and oppression through engaged and empathetic design. By designing for all, Grant High School has realized a more physical, racial, socioeconomic, and gender-inclusive community in which students feel welcome, accepted, and connected. Grant High School was built in the fast-growing community of Northeast Portland in 1923. By the 1950s and 60s, the courtyards had been filled with additions, turning the campus into a maze of outdoor passages. Once a stately building, the school had fallen into disrepair, suffering from 50 years of deferred maintenance. The historic buildings were beloved by members of the community, many of whom had roamed the halls over multiple generations. The community took pride in the historic building's brick and terracotta facades, along with the auditorium and the choir room, made famous by the film Mr. Holland's Opus. The team kicked off an intensive four years of design in the fall of 2015, beginning with a collaborative public engagement process, which consistently drew community participation and was followed by in-depth stakeholder engagement, user group meetings, and student outreach sessions. With such a strong and active community presence, this process brought alignment on divergent issues, consensus where there was none, and creatively resolved the challenges posed. The inclusive and transparent process ensured that all voices were heard and considered. The resulting co-creation of the design outcome developed strong relationships based on trust, respect, and mutual support. The team focused on designing for equity, inclusion, and social justice in support of the school's goal to see improved learning outcomes. Grant High School was originally built on a tight 10-acre site in the 1920s. It then endured eight building additions over the next half century, which congested the center of campus and created a barrier between the school and the adjacent Grant Park. The design approach for this $138 million, 1800 student modernization was to reuse the original 1920 structures while removing the remaining buildings that had previously infilled the site. In addition to preserving the cultural significance of the original buildings, this decision had a positive impact on the embodied carbon footprint and provided a framework for the team's decision making throughout the project. Grant High School is located in an urban neighborhood that combines a mix of single-family residential, multi-family residential, and commercial uses. The school sits amidst a large urban park that includes recreational fields alongside wooded areas with a variety of deciduous and coniferous trees, in addition to walking paths, a community pool, play areas, and now open green space. By removing a rabbit warren of awkward building additions and creating a more compact three-story footprint for the school, the design provides a much stronger connection between the school and the park, creating a variety of outdoor spaces in which students can cultivate a greater awareness of the natural world in the park's urban oasis. 
the new campus design erases where Grant Park stops and the school begins. Replaced with cross park connectivity, the design creates a new outdoor experiential framework. Now with non-programmed open green space for both students and the community to enjoy, the heart of the park and the gem of the neighborhood have been restored. Grant High School models what social justice and educational buildings can look like for the larger Portland community. The graceful way the project now seamlessly knits together the park and the school as a wholly integrated, vibrant, and safe public use facility challenges the building of walls and fences between schools and their neighborhoods. The design intentionally responds to the legacy of division. The once disjointed interconnectivity between the upper floors and a separate dark stairway to the submerged lower level has been replaced with a three-story open central stair, carved out of the center of the existing building. Upon entering the school, students immediately see the grand stair with views of the makerspace below, the auditorium ahead, and Grant Magazine above. Extensive demolition was performed, including cutting out the entire floor plates all the way back to the auditorium. The stair was then dropped into place, creating the new open central circulation route, which has become the hub of activity, giving new meaning to what has historically been referred to as Center Hall. The new design addresses the challenges associated with the original double-loaded corridor, built for an industrialized and outmoded model of education. The narrow width limited the ability to adapt the structure to progressive and collaborative modes of learning. By removing the facade and adding a 30-foot wide addition along the entire west face of the building, a central collaborative zone was created. What was once a traditional double-loaded corridor has become a dynamic learning community, offering diverse environments throughout the widened floor plate to support social learning. Learning is no longer confined to individual owned rooms, but now infuses the entire floor by spatially supporting group work in both individualized and small group settings. These spaces are varied, daylit, open, or acoustically enclosed, single and multi-story, and have all become collaborative resources for every learner and educator. Once skeptical teachers have embraced the small instructional spaces and are finding ways to enhance instruction through group work and project-based activities. The flex areas provide breakout spaces for classes, wall space for gallery walks, and spaces for students to socialize and study together. Solid hallways with minimal transparency contributed to an environment with no sense of connectivity and little connection to the outdoors. In response, visually transparent yet acoustically separated forums were created at both ends of the school, offering a different type of flexible learning space that is available for use by students, staff, or the community. The forums were integrated into the building by cutting out the existing floor plate, and skylights were added to help illuminate and bring natural light deep into the core of the main building. Louvered daylight controls were included to allow darkening of the space for flexible use. The forums have been designed to easily flex between large group learning space, social hangout space, and presentation space, while also providing a visual connection between floors, cross corridor, and the outdoors. The two collaboration forums are used for events such as guest speakers, student presentations, music performances, and club meetings. This has transformed the school, which had struggled with much of its learning environments in five disparate basement levels, into a unified, collaborative, cohesive, light-filled environment that serves all with equity. The design team performed multiple iterations of daylight modeling to study a variety of spaces, including the choir room. The previous dark interior with water-stained ceilings from an old and leaking skylight was in need of a refresh to bring back its glory. The skylight was replaced and the historic skylight diffuser was carefully refurbished to provide optimal daylight and preserve the character of the beloved space for future generations. With the top one third of the previous windows infilled with solid panels, natural light was a high priority for students and staff. 
In response, the design team brought back the grandeur and height of the historic windows with operable and energy efficient replicas of the original design. Energy efficient light fixtures and new systems, equipment, and technology throughout also help create comfortable and modern learning environments in spaces like the science classroom with views out to the park. Grant's historic auditorium was beloved, but lacked many of the amenities needed to function as a modern day theater. It struggled with poor acoustics, a shallow stage with insufficient wings, and little technology and lighting support. But rather than replace it, the community successfully campaigned the school district to restore and improve the 900 plus seat theater. State of the art improvements to address its deficiencies, along with a full seismic upgrade has created a new home for the local performing arts scene. CTE programs are not clustered, but are integrated and distributed throughout campus. This bonus breakout space adjacent to the maker space was once submerged, but is now daylit with access to two courtyards. This integrated approach creates opportunities for program expansion while elevating and equalizing new exciting pathways to careers. Seeing all the new CTE spaces for the first time, students are signing up for classes they otherwise would not have considered. It was discovered early in the engagement process that Grant was home to more than a dozen openly transgender students, and the design team was asked to address the bias of the male and female segregated bathrooms. The new design replaced existing gendered gang-style bathrooms with non-gendered individual toilet rooms. Full walls and doors open to a shared space with wash basins and drinking fountains. As a pass-through space with multiple ways in and out, the design limits entrapment and allows passive supervision. The all-user restrooms have eliminated the safety concerns related to having large restroom areas behind closed doors. We have received positive feedback from students, teachers, and custodians alike that the individual restrooms are working well. The design team addressed longstanding socioeconomic equity issues, which historically placed remedial and special education classrooms in the lower levels. The original school located 30% of its learning environments in dark and disconnected basements. To improve these learning environments, one of the fundamental moves of the new design was to lower the grade of the courtyard and provide an addition that connects the basement spaces while illuminating them with daylight. The original cafeteria was also located in a dark basement that was void of daylight and carried unwanted legacies of social inequity, limiting students accessing free and reduced lunches to social isolation during the lunch period. Now, two new commons provide a choice for students, with the lower level connecting to an exterior dining space. By sculpting the land, a once dreary experience has been replaced with a bright, daylit space to eat, socialize, and study, directly linked to a new outdoor courtyard. The new commons have successfully brought students of all socioeconomic means back to the heart of the campus. To eat and socialize together, and those who are receiving free and reduced lunch are now undetectable. The Upper Commons offers a different dining experience with views over the courtyard and out to Grant Park and the Arts Building beyond. Another effect of opening to the courtyards that had previously been infilled with buildings was to provide both visual and physical connections to nature. An elevated walk spans over the courtyard, allowing direct connections from both levels of the cafeteria to outdoor recreational and gathering spaces. For the first time in decades, the community can relate to and enjoy the facade of the original 1923 gymnasium. Too small to be used as an auxiliary gym, the building has been transformed into the arts complex and is the new home for the fine and visual arts programs highlighting the emphasis on electives and creativity that has always existed at Grant. Windows were placed in the previously solid masonry gym walls, giving art labs ample northern light and views to Grant Park. Studios flank a double height gallery space at the center of the building, which showcases student artwork. A second level floor floats around the central gallery, encouraging cross-disciplinary exploration. 
the design team restored an existing 43-foot-long skylight, which floods the gallery with natural daylight. Recreation and exercise are an essential part of a high school curriculum, and the design recognized this by programming one of the two large courtyards for the building as turf-covered athletic space spilling out from the adjacent weight room and gym, as well as investing in an upgraded multi-use playfield located a half level above. The new gymnasium at Grant replaced one that was too small, lacked daylight, and severed the connection between the school and Grant Park. The wood floor of the demolished 1950s gym with its bold Grant letters was salvaged and repurposed at the entrance to the new gym as a prominent wall graphic celebrating the spirit of Grant. The new gym is nestled into the site by excavating and lowering the floor so that it does not exceed the height of the rest of the school and respects the scale of the residential neighborhood. Strategically placed windows provide natural daylight and connection to the outdoor field and the forested park beyond. Combined with these large windows, inexpensive smaller unit skylights spread throughout the space provide balanced daylight so gym classes are often held without the use of electrical lighting. Although the 1950s gym was demolished, it now functions as an important sustainable feature. The gym was turned into a stormwater infiltration gallery by leaving the basement foundation walls of the demolished building in place. The basement's concrete slab was torn out and the entire basement was filled with gravel. This strategy addresses one of the most vexing problems facing Portland's regional watershed by mitigating the periodic stormwater and sewer overflow released into the Willamette River and Columbia Slough. Stormwater from the building roofs and much of the site is piped to the underground gallery where it can infiltrate back into the ground. The massive stormwater gallery was then graded and feathered into the landscape and ultimately covered with a lawn where students gather to eat lunch or practice sports. The open grassy area serves as a natural connector between the school and Grant Park. The project included a 325 kilowatt PV solar panel system. In addition to the large rooftop array, the design team took the opportunity to make the panels more visible to raise awareness for sustainable strategies among the student population. Semi-transparent bifacial solar panels were used as a canopy roof for the large bike shelter, allowing dappled light to illuminate the bike racks. Indoor air quality was an important consideration for the design team, and the project met the lead VOC requirements for adhesives, sealants, paints and coatings, flooring systems, wood and agrofiber products, as well as ceiling and wall systems. The design team also strove to eliminate materials on the Living Building Challenge red list. The most important decision related to the project's carbon footprint was the extensive reuse of existing buildings. Nearly 70% of the modernized school's square footage is in renovated spaces, and because the buildings that were saved were concrete or multi-wythe brick, it represents a significant amount of embodied energy. By reusing and restoring salvage materials and building components, the project significantly reduced its embodied carbon footprint. The historic stairs throughout the building have been restored with their massive double-hung wood windows and trim, as have the beautiful curved wood railings. Asbestos flooring was also removed with exposed concrete left in its place to reduce material use. Elsewhere throughout the building, original decorative molding, wood paneling, and trim have been refurbished. Stained glass exit signs were also reused, and the most significant salvage material is 4,300 square feet of maple gym flooring that was reused as wall finish, floors, ceilings, benches, and display shelves throughout the school. The original 1920s buildings were built with heavy fireproof materials like brick, terracotta, concrete, and hollow clay tiles, which meant that the buildings posed significant life safety risks in a seismic event. All existing buildings received a full seismic upgrade to life safety standards, including massive shotcrete shear walls and steel seismic load collectors woven through the existing floor to tie the existing structure together. Portions of the structure with substandard materials, such as exposed rebar or no rebar at all, were also upgraded. 
the extensive seismic upgrades and flexible planning ensure that the building will survive and continue to serve the community for another 100 years. When Grant High School reopened in the fall of 2019, following two years of construction, it drew an unprecedented crowd of over 2,500 community members to its public grand opening celebration. Now a revitalized, equitable home for learning, Grant's modernization demonstrates that restoratively addressing hidden bias will empower students to build inclusive communities uplifting the next generation through the power of architecture. The building design provides a variety of spaces that appeal to the diversity that exists in a large comprehensive high school. Students are finding their niche and new ways to use the spaces for learning. Occupants who experienced Grant High School before and after the modernization reported that the physical changes in creating connections translated directly to improvements in the social environment. High school learners commented on the three forum stairs which connect floor levels at strategic points in the main building and allow students to change levels in inviting social spaces which also function as presentation style learning settings. An increased level of internal transparency throughout the school adds visual connections between enclosed classrooms and open flex spaces in the center. Learners reported that they felt safer and more connected to others while circulating through the modernized buildings. With this renovation, the staff have noticed an increase in the number of students eating lunch on site, which was attributed to the re-envisioned cafeteria as a two-level space with physical and visual connections to Grant Park. Grant's enrollment continues to increase dramatically. Students are transferring in from private schools and the graduation rate has risen to 94%. The Grant High School modernization highlights how the reuse of a nearly century-old existing structure can result in an effective modern learning environment that is not compromised, but instead enriched by its historic structure and character, while making a substantial impact on the student experience. A beloved, iconic, historic school, the modernization has propelled Grant High School into the future while embracing and honoring its past. Well, thanks everyone for watching the video with us. I hope it provided a good overview of our discussion with Dr. Carol Campbell, the former principal at Grant High School, and with Maddie Roach, who is actually now an alumni of Grant. So congratulations to you both, Carol, for your retirement last year, and of course, Maddie, on your recent graduation. Uh, before we jump into our discussion, let's start by each of you introducing yourselves and providing a little background regarding your history and involvement at Grant High School. So Carol, do you want to go first? Yes, yeah, so I'm Carol Campbell. Um, I did just retire at, at the end of last year, 2020, after 36 years in education. Uh, I uh, started my career in Missouri, and then I moved to Portland and spent nine years as a science teacher at Grant and my own children went to Grant. And then I left Grant High School and was a principal in another district. Um, and then I came back to Portland and was a principal at Benson High School, another Portland public high school. And then I was uh, fortunate enough to return to Grant and spend the last seven years of my career at Grant High School as the principal there. I am Madison Roach. I am now a Grant alum. Um, I graduated about two weeks ago. Um, throughout my time at Grant, I'm a three-sport athlete. I'm involved in many clubs and activities um, throughout the school. I was in leadership for three years. Um, 
equity class and team. I this year was the BSU vice president and senior class representative. Um, I was director of assemblies. I was in grant dance collective <laughs> constitution team, a whole lot of stuff um, throughout the school. And yeah, that's mostly it. You must have been busy. <laughs> oh, so, so busy. <laughs> All right, Carol, so I want to start uh, by taking you back six years ago to the summer of 2015, when we were really just beginning this journey together. And at the time, we had just established the design advisory group, which was comprised of parents, students, teachers, alumni, neighbors, um, a whole host of folks. We were engaging in broader community um, outreach in a series of open houses. We were consistently meeting with students and teachers and all in an effort to really gather information and gain as much knowledge as we possibly could to really understand the needs of the school and the community. So I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about your thoughts, hopes, and dreams at that time and what might have most surprised you about that process that we went through. Um, yeah, I, it was an exciting time. I mean, when I, when I came back to Grant in 2013, that's when I was told that we were going to be uh, part of the modernization, the bond, and uh, we were going to be engaging in this process. And it, for me, it really started right then, where I started talking to the community, and we were starting to spread the word and getting a lot of uh, a lot of excitement generated about the possibility. It seemed like a long ways away. You know, we weren't going to really open the building until 2019, the fall. Of, so in 2013, that seemed like, oh, is this really going to happen? Um, so when we started working with, with Malam and the design, going through that design process, it, it really seemed real. And um, the amount of input and um, participation that we were getting was uh, really, uh, it wasn't surprising. It, it was really, uh, you know, like a time of, you know, uh, just unlimited possibilities, I guess. And people were coming up with, with all kinds of ideas and, and uh, you know, what the high school could look like and what we could do. And we did, we did have a budget. Um, so some, some of those things didn't happen, but um, what surprised, I guess what surprised me most about the process was uh, the amount of, participation and input that was provided by various stakeholder groups within the community. Like we would have Saturday sessions where I was, you know, not, not really sure if a lot of people would show up, but we had usually a really good turnout uh, for the Saturday community events. And then the engagement of the students that were part of the, of the design team um, that consistently came to the meetings every week. Um, and my, you know, my hopes and dreams at that time um, were just that, can we pull this off? You know, it, it just seemed like a really big task at the time. All right, so the next question is also for you, Carol. This is about learning outcomes. Um, in addition to classrooms, the modernized Grant High School includes many flexible, non-traditional learning spaces that provide opportunities for different types of group sizes and learning activities. These include the multi-story forum classrooms, the learning spaces open to the hallways, uh, small instructional rooms, a maker space, and an art gallery. How did the educators adjust educational delivery to take full advantage of the new environment? In what ways has the new building influenced how both students and educators learn and collaborate? Yeah, that's a great um, thing to think back on because I think at the time we were we were trying to design a school for the future, not just um, make the things we already had better um, or, or modernize the things we already had. We were trying to think about like what might instruction look like 10 years from now. Um, so that was really a um, looking at it that way. We didn't really know um, what, what we actually needed. So we used these themes like um, collaboration and inclusivity and uh, creating different new spaces that were open and um, made everyone feel welcome. So I know that we, uh, you know, some examples like the, the student leadership class, once the build, once we were in this process and the building was going to open, the student leadership class was 
uh, we had more students enrolled in that class than we ever had in the past. There was just a, a desire to be part of the process. And so we used one of the bigger flexible spaces for the leadership class so they could be visible to the rest of the school. So the, the projects that they were working on, they were, you know, there was a lot of glass and a lot of places for them to display um, their projects. And so students walking by could see that there was this student led group that was working on things associated with school. Um, the makerspace, which we had never had, we had kind of a makerspace before that trying to get teachers used to it, but um, it wasn't until we opened the big makerspace at Grant, it was right there in the center of the building where everyone who came in the front could see it. Um, and so we had not just um, engineering classes using it, which is, is kind of like, you know, of course they would want to go into the makerspace, but we also had history classes, language arts classes, science classes, going into the makerspace and students learning how to use 3D printers. Um, the forums were, was another area where um, we, again, we didn't know how those might be used, but uh, that whoever came up with that idea, uh, those were probably some of the most popular spaces. Once we opened the building, they were booked every day, almost all day with teachers taking their classes there, guest speakers during lunch, there were clubs like fighting over who could get to the forum and, and reserve it for their, for their club meetings. Um, students uh, were meeting in these open spaces. Uh, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me was that, and I'll probably mention this later too, was the cafeteria at the commons area uh, where we had probably maybe 75 students eating in the cafeteria before out of 1800 students. And when we opened up the building, we had, it, it felt like everybody was staying on campus for lunch. There were so many different places to eat. There were two levels of commons. There was outside space. Um, there were all kinds of, of and the, the outside space was beautiful with, with tables and it was like an outside dining area. Um, and then the, uh, the extended learning spaces, something teachers have never had before. And we did get a little bit of pushback, but why don't we just make more classrooms instead of these spaces? But then once we opened, many of those spaces, if not all those spaces were being used all day where small groups of students were meeting, um, uh, there were gallery walks going on and um, really uh, instruction, it elevated our instruction, I'd have to say. And two possibilities that no one really even thought of before. But once we were there in the building, many teachers really just um, became leaders in how to use those spaces and provide um, state-of-the-art instruction. All right, so we also wanted um, to talk about how the design of grant focused on maximizing opportunities for social interaction by interspersing collaboration and hangout spaces throughout the building. And we really focused on creating fluid, nonlinear circulation routes that would really allow students to cross paths and spur those kind of chance encounters while moving throughout campus. So Maddie, I'm curious to hear what your experience was being on campus and how the built environment might have impacted how you and your friends tended to socialize. And if that felt any different than when you were attending school at the Marshall campus. Yeah, um, I think overall, like I, love new grant um I think it was like one of the best things that like could have happened to me throughout high school um after my sophomore year which ended at Marshall a lot of my friends were seniors so they were leaving and they weren't coming back to new grant so like the first couple weeks of my junior year were like harder for me on the social side because I all my friends were gone and like most of my other friends were like on my basketball team and my volleyball team, but like we didn't really hang out that much. And um, I think new grant helped a lot with making me, having me meet new friends. I feel like when you're going into a new new building, that's like brand new, new everything, everyone's kind of like happier, which is like kind of weird. So it was like super easy to meet new people and especially in the spaces. Um, I think one of my favorites is the forum as well. Um, I think the beginning of my junior year, that was like where the first BSU meeting was. And it was just like this big building. You could see everybody. You guys could all sit down and like have a lecture in there. We had um, lunches in there with like pizza and stuff. And it was just like a closed safe space for like students of color, I think. Like when we had BSU meetings in there, all the students of color when they're in there and we could just lock the doors and just sit in there and talk and eat lunch, which I really enjoyed. 
And I feel like a lot of other students enjoyed that too. And also like the center hall uh, area. I'm a SEI kid, so I'm in the Self Enhancement Incorporated uh, organization. And their office is like right in front of the main office. So like, it was also cool to like, just have that space right there. As you walk in the door, you can say hi, like it's a glass window right there. So you don't even have to go in like in between classes, you can just wave at your coordinator and all that. And like, if they need you, they can just like call you from inside the office through the window, which I really enjoyed. And like right there when lunch is about to happen in center hall, that's where like, oh, meet me in center hall. Like we can go get food or we can go eat here. I also really enjoyed that. There's, there's so many things I like about the new school. I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to go back like <laughs> full time, but I, I think I like everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome to hear. All right, so now, uh, Carol, we're, we're curious to hear about the um, preservation, your thoughts on the preservation of the existing building. So um, dating back to the 1920s, Grant High School is a building with so much historical significance that is beloved by the community. Many features of the existing building were preserved and restored as part of the modernization, such as the historic facades, the stairwells, the choir room, and the historic auditorium. What preserved features of the historic buildings stand out most to you and why? Um, yeah, like many schools this old, um, there's lots of historical aspects and traditions and everybody has an opinion about what we sh you know, should keep. And there was a lot of input um, about that, um, what should stay the same, what should be new and different. and um, I think what stood out to me most, um, and Maddie's mentioned this, is the center hall um, and the porch area, just the main entrance of the building and the center hall. While it was, um, it was changed, it's definitely uh, modernized and, and looks much, it looks a little different than it did, of course, it's a lot different, but it's still, the essence of the center hall still exists, which was a gathering place, a meeting place, um, it's kind of the central information getting uh, area of the school. Um, so I, I feel like that that really, you know, walking in there the first time, well, the first time I saw the stairs, the grand staircase before any of the rest was done, um, I was able to visit and see that staircase. Um, the stairs previous to that were hidden behind walls. You didn't even see them. Um, and had this weird kind of sloping floor in that area. Um, it was, it was just, it was really phenomenal. It was really, and, and it has, it has maintained at least, you know, the six months that I was able to be in the building with the students before the pandemic hit, it was, it really had maintained and, and preserved that, that feel of this is the center of the school. This is where we come together and, and meet our friends and get information and greet each other in the morning and things like that. All right. Um, so as we know, the old grant was really compromised by several decades of building additions that were on a tight site. And that really resulted in classrooms that were without natural daylight. They were in disconnected basements. There were cramped passageways between buildings and they had actually introduced parking to the, to the center of the campus, which had really pushed the students to the perimeter. So for the new design, we really focused on repairing those connections and bringing the students back to the center. And we did that by connecting all of the basements. We added the courtyards to bring in the natural light. And then we also wanted to give students options and choice. So as you mentioned, Carol, we did the, the different levels um, for dining and eating. Um, and then we also provided them with a lot of different flex spaces that they could use. Um, so, but I'm curious from a teaching perspective, we had intentionally dispersed the career pathway classrooms throughout the building. We had provided teacher collaboration spaces that were independent of the classrooms, which they had not had before. And I'm wondering if you saw a difference in how educators were teaching, collaborating and socializing in the new grant. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had we had a little bit of a chance to um, ease into it when we were on the Marshall campus uh, because we we were using that model of having a classroom space and, and an office space and 
and sharing some classrooms. But when we got back to the new building um, and really had you know all of the technology that we needed and we had you know all of the space we needed to do what we had planned on doing, I definitely saw a difference in how uh, teachers, educators, and students were, were interacting with each other. So the, the old design uh, of Grant and of many schools is uh, just automatically kind of makes teaching an isolating process. Uh, there's, you wanna, you have as many classrooms as possible. So everybody has their own classroom. And then you could be a teacher in that building and you could have stayed in your classroom all day long, all year and never interacted with anyone else. There's, there was no staff like lunch eating area. There were no staff gathering places. There was no place for teachers to gather unless they you know, met up with each other in their own rooms or whatever, but you could literally stay in your room all day, all year. So we wanted to disrupt that and um, in a good way that would promote collaboration and promote people talking to one another. Um, and we didn't feel like that was a healthy thing either, like to just be in a room all day long and not moving around and not walking around and, and seeing your peers and um, like talking about teaching. One of the things, if, if you ever give teachers a survey, we would, we would ask like, what is one thing that you really want to see more of? They would always say more collaboration time. But then when we started talking about the classrooms <laughs> at Grant, everybody wanted their own classroom. <laughs> so it was, it was, you know, it was, it was hard to kind of create that balance. Um, and I think the design of the building really, once people got in there and saw how it, how it was set up and how it worked, um, many teachers I heard from who really love their office space, their ability to go into their office if they needed quiet space or whatever to work. Um, but while they were in there, they were also running into colleagues and peers and, and it, being able to have um, uh, professional conversations about teaching, about learning, about what's happening, um, and also socializing. We would see them eating lunch in these various teacher offices. They always they had a big table and they would be sitting there eating lunch together. Um, and that, that that kind of spilled over for the students, too. And I'm sure, you know, Maddie might mention that. But um, it, it just created an environment where there was so much more opportunity for uh, for collaboration, the cl a lot of uh, openness, a lot of glass um, in the in the different areas uh, that were uh, available for teachers to collaborate and students to collaborate as well. So I think it again, I think it elevated our instruction um, and, and gave teachers the ability to actually think outside the box and do some things that they maybe hadn't done before. Right, and, and so Maddie there, as Carol mentioned, there was a lot of glass, a lot of visual connectivity throughout the space, whether it was glass walls or, or windows. And a lot of that was done, you know, so that students could stay connected, students and teachers actually, see into the classrooms, um, see what's happening behind those doors that were closed before or might've been solid walls. I'm wondering if uh, the more open environment really changed how students experience the space or you yourself or how you engaged even with each other or with your teachers. Yeah, um, I think it did help with your like social engagement and stuff. Um, I definitely think the, I wasn't, again, I was in leadership. So leadership was like that big glass classroom like in the middle of the school. And it was always fun, like seeing your friends walk by or like being able to wave at your friends and stuff. And I definitely think, I don't know if like, I don't know if this is like a scientific fact or something, but like the natural light in the classroom or in all the classrooms, basically, I think that was like the best thing for me at least. Cause like a lot of the classrooms at Marshall would have like no windows or at least like one on one side. Um, and it was just like a very dark feeling. You're kind of tired already especially like on those rainy days, you like just want to go to sleep. But I think those classrooms at Grant like kept you awake and kept you engaged and more focused and um, like seeing the sun outside, like, oh, I can't wait to get out of school and go outside and have fun. So like the little things like that, that like I didn't think would make a difference in a school definitely did. Yeah, I'd add to, I don't, I don't have any data to back this up, but for the, the time that we were in the building in, in 19, 20, um, it really felt like more students were in class than, you, you know, not, not so many students out in the hallway, not so many students looking for reasons to be out of class. And I think 
that probably speaks to what Maddie's talking about too. When you're in a dreary room with shades and only partial light coming in and um, you know, the building was old and it was, it was dirty. I mean, we did the best we could with what we had, but it wasn't really a conducive environment to get excited about learning um, and have any data, but it, it sure felt like everybody's in class most of the time. <laughs> Many design features of the modernized building address inequities that were caused by the physical environment. Throughout the engagement process, uh, our team learned that the existing buildings restrooms did not feel safe and led to bullying and exclusion. In response, the new building realized an entirely gender inclusive toileting experience. What are your thoughts about the building's gender inclusive restrooms? And yeah, maybe Carol, if we can hear from you and then from Maddie as well. Yeah, well, I mean, this vivid in my mind uh, when we first started this conversation was, again, here we have this kind of blank slate and the ability to create something that would be really inclusive um, and, and really not having a model to use, uh, like no other high schools that we knew of had really done much with their restrooms. I mean, these buildings, you stay in them for a hundred years and you just exist with whatever, you know, was, was made. And even new buildings that were being built were, you know, just building traditional types restrooms. We did some visits and to some college campuses and kind of saw what some, uh, places like University of Oregon were doing with their, with their new construction and thought like, could we do that at a high school? Um, and then come back and talk to the different students groups. And this is, this is one of the areas where this had to be, I feel like this had to be a student led discussion and decision because they're the main users of these spaces. And we can't just impose something that you know, they're not gonna be happy with. So talking to various student groups, leadership, I think Maddie was probably um, maybe part of one of those conversations. Um, the students who were on the design team, the QSA. Um, and you know, it started out as a conversation about gender, um, gender issues, transgender students, um, uh, queer students, um, students who were being bullied in the restroom potentially, but it, it transgressed into, doesn't everybody just want privacy in the restroom? Um, we don't really, you know, we stopped talking about them as, as transgender restrooms, which is how the district even was, was talking about these restrooms that they were creating. And we had always tried to create some private single, single user restrooms in the spaces we were in. But this became more of we need to create a space that is is creates privacy for everyone and is safe. And uh, Malam again, the I, it was really great. I re, I remember they came to the meeting with I think three options for the type of restrooms we could have, and we took those options to various groups, and um, it was a unanimous. Each group selected the. Um, more inclusive all user restroom design that we have right now. And it was very forward thinking. It was very much something that no one else had ever done. And again, we're designing a building for, that's gonna be around for a hundred years. And it just, it, it really just made sense. So um, I, I, and I, I was, uh, I've been contacted by other school districts and, and people across the nation about these restrooms. So um, I, I feel, I, I go in those restrooms. I, I feel like they're, I feel like they're safe. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know that we were in there a short time that there were issues that came up at all that we needed to, to address. But if any issues would come up, it, they were probably more behavior issues than they were a, a result of the design of the restroom, um, if there if there was anything. So I'm really glad that we we did that. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think when I um first heard of the bathrooms I was like what is going on <laughs> I was like because it was like it's nothing that has ever been done so I was like all gender like I was like what is this what is this going to look like and like when you first hear it you're picturing like the stalls that schools usually have that are like just these type of doors where you can see under see above so I was like what is this going to be but I think they're more private. You can have your privacy. Um, I think they're more safe. I like how they're open to the hallways. So like if you did have a problem, there's teachers nearby or there's a staff or adult nearby. Um, yeah, I like the open space and I think it made them more clean. Like I think, 
I don't know if guys are a little, a little bit more messier than girls sometimes. So I think it held those guys accountable of having to clean up after themselves and knowing that if you make a mess, someone's going to know it was you. Um, so I really, I really like that. Cause I know like bathrooms were always like the iffy part for me. Cause I'm like a very like clean person. And I like, like things one way. Addie, it's interesting when you were talking about the cleanliness, when uh, I was at Grant earlier um, this year and I was talking to the custodian, cause I was wondering what, what they thought about it, because that's where we felt like a lot of the pushback would come. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, well, one, he really liked them because he said they were actually easier to clean and he could lock them off. Mm -hmm. But he also mentioned, he said, you know, at first it was a little messy. And he said, but the girls, they rule this place because they <laughs> would totally call out the guys because <laughs> they would walk in after them. And he said, and now that they're clean, they're cleaner. I it's thought that like, was amazing. It's so, it's so weird. There's not like a a bathroom you don't want to go in because it's going to be dirty. Like you just know there's probably going to be clean. Um, so back to you, Carol. During the initial engage, engagement sessions, student organizations like Grant Magazine and Queer Straight Alliance were really strong advocates for addressing difficult cultural topics around racial equity, gender identity, and socioeconomic diversity. Um, and these voices help to inform the design by aligning all stakeholders around that shared vision of success. So as we heard from them and the public heard from them and the design advisory group was hearing from them, it really became uh, uh, something that everyone was really looking for. So. I'm wondering if the role or awareness of these active student groups has changed since the new school has opened. Yeah, you know, I, you know, having, we were there for like six months, like I said, <laughs> and, and we were just getting, uh, kind of getting acclimated and uh, different groups were starting to use the different spaces. And uh, we had had some race forward events, uh, during that during that year too, we're using different spaces and different groups were stepping up. You know, I, I hope that the students really realize that their voice matters. And um, the groups like QSA, BSU, NASU, APIA, Latinx, um, and, and then others, other clubs and the community, we we really were learning and growing together. It wasn't always perfect and you know, we, we had missteps and we, you know, we had to do some education and things like that when, when we'd have certain events or, or topics that came up and the students were really leading that work. And I don't know how it was this year, but I hope it continued, it continues to grow. It doesn't have to look the same. It can, it can look different, but we had established a pretty strong student advocacy opportunity, um, which was focused on racial equity and inclusivity. Um, we had more students enroll in leadership, um, like I said, and um, you know I was fortunate enough to work with Maddie um, in her leadership roles. Um, so uh, I think that I just hope that it continues. It, you can, it's easy to fall back into kind of the status quo, but um, I hope that those groups will continue to step up and speak out and 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 uh, let their voice be heard. Yeah, let's hear. From Maddie on that because Maddie as you mentioned um, your involvement in the grant community <laughs> was yeah. huge you were three sport athlete and I'll brag on you that it you know basketball softball volleyball amazing um, you were involved in dance vice president of black student union member of the constitution team you mentioned the equity club um, and I know you had a ton of others that you mentioned as well so it appears that much of your time at Grant was really focused on those equity and social justice issues. So I would love to hear um, just a little bit about your involvement in some of those clubs and organizations, and also would be curious if there are any aspects of the built environment that actually helped support or enhance the missions of those clubs. Yeah, definitely. So I, de I got involved in these clubs uh, basically all of them except for con I mean except for uh, BSU my sophomore year BSU I started freshman year and um, actually Carol helped me get involved in most of these um, I had like a 
not so good race forward experience. And I wanted to know how I could get involved in these conversations and how to make these um, race forwards. And she directed me to leadership, which then directed me to equity team. Um, and leadership, I feel like it's like the big bubble of everything. Cause like you can just go from one place to the other in that class. Um, and that's how you get very involved in like assemblies and activities going on in the school and other things outside of the community. Like leadership just attaches you to everything. Um, but yeah, so I think definitely I wanted to focus on social justice and equity throughout my time at Grant. Um, just going to like two, I went to Beaumont as well. So going to two predominantly white schools. And um, I think my first year, year and a half at Beaumont, I was having a harder time too, because it was kind of like a shock to me. And I was like, I felt very out of place. And then I grant, I felt like a little bit of the same, but BSU was like my home, because there's like a lot of people who look like me, came from the same background as me. So those two clubs definitely like, I mean, that club definitely got me going. And um, leadership overall would, uh, how do I explain this? There's so much I can talk about. <laughs> But um, yeah, so leadership overall was like my connection to equity club and being in the first equity class at Grant. And I think in the Portland Public School District, if that's right, the first, okay, yeah. The first equity class in the Portland Public School District. So in that class, we made race forwards, which sounds like, oh yeah, like they made race forwards. It was so hard. It was like hours, you would come to class, you would start doing stuff and like getting, getting ready for it and then you'd go home and work for like two more hours on it like it was so time consuming I just I was I did not know what I was getting myself in for and um there was like you had to look up statistics you had to get quotes you had to find pictures you had to break the school up the whole school into different classrooms which was so hard uh, you had to because this is a student-led conversation so st teachers aren't even running these conversations so we had someone a, facil a facilitator um, come in and train us and you had to get like a slip filled out by your parents and the whole school day you're learning how to facilitate so it was very time consuming but equity and BSU I think educated me so much to like a level that I wouldn't even like understand it's like deeply rooted in myself now and like I can have these conversations and like say the right thing and know how to stay on topic and know how to not offend someone so that is like something great that I learned and definitely the uh, built environments helped a lot uh, BSU again we were in this little classroom there's so many of us and we're, we like get uh, lunch brought to us so it's like we're all like bumping into each other trying to get the last slice of pizza and there's not enough chairs for everyone so some people are standing up and then you have teachers that are coming in to talk and like it's hard to have um, guest speakers come in because there's already too many of us so that was like super hard and then having like the forums coming back to new grant and having as many people the forum being too big for bsc because there's not enough people now and um yeah so it was great and like i again the natural lighting in the classrooms brings in so much joy, so much energy. It's just great. I um, definitely love it. And especially also with leadership class, having these um, glass windows. And also there is a learning space, I don't, like the open area uh, right behind the leadership classroom. So we would come in there, you talk with your committee and then boom, you'd go out into the hallway and you'd work by yourself. And then your teacher can just come out of the classroom and call your name super quietly and you're right there like it's very compacted but very spaced out in a good way which um I really liked and yeah I, I, there's so much I could touch on that's <laughs> I know something that that you may not have may not have thought about but it is it you know like you mentioned it's super difficult to plan an event for 2,000 people yeah <laughs> and you know it, and what you were doing on that it's, it's phenomenal that students were doing that um, kind of turned it all over to students and it, it was it was awesome um, but one of the things that we included in the modernization was technology mm -hmm. so you knew that every teacher every classroom had a projector and had the ability to 
project and share the documents you were creating and the videos you were creating and, and all of that. So that's another way that you know, before it was hit and miss, kind of who had what, yeah. who had request things. And um, so, uh, yeah, your planning and was phenomenal. Um, and then having having those spaces and then also having the technology to pull it off was really helpful. Yeah, definitely. I didn't even think about that, but yeah. You could just share a link and the whole presentation would be throughout the school, which was like, it made everything so much easier. And there wasn't, I mean, there was a lot of like printing and paperwork, but there wasn't as much as there was um, in the Marshall building. That's great. All right, so this next question is for Maddie and um, connecting the building users to nature was a major theme of the design. Mm -hmm. Providing daylight learning spaces, views to the outside and connecting the building to Grant Park uh, with the North and South courtyards. Um, we're all strategies to accomplish this. And so we'd like to just hear from you kind of what was your, I, I know you've kind of touched on the, um, appreciating the daylight in the building, but what was kind of your day-to-day -day experience with the kind of connection to the outdoors as a student? Yeah, um, I think definitely like towards the end of the year, well, like I guess March for me, cause I, that's the last day, last month I was there. But, um, and the beginning of my junior year when it was nicer, the outdoor spaces um, for me, mostly like the turf area, I really enjoyed that. Um, also my first week in biology, we went over, we had some project where we had to like get leaves and stuff. We just walked over to like the dog park and over there, and which was like super <laughs> cool. Like we had access to do stuff like that. And um, it's always fun when you're like out of the classroom, you're actually in the park doing like some hands-on learning, um, which I really enjoyed. Cause I'm, I feel like at Marshall, you're like in that big, I don't even know what to call it. And then there's that little area in the middle. And it's like a lot of classrooms can't all take that area at once or it's gonna turn into a chaos show. So there's so many areas throughout Grant where uh, you could go outside your teacher could take you outside for learning. You have the front, you have the side, you have the field, you have like the little grass field in front of the um, art building. Like you have so many things that you could use uh, or utilize in your day-to-day -day learning. And also um, even I think this past two weeks, me and my friend Riley from volleyball, we just walked over to Grant and was on the turf field and playing volleyball. Like it's like little things like that that you don't really think you'll use is like great and then you have someone like on the other side playing soccer and kicking a soccer ball it is just like the best space ever um for like little things like that like you can i babysit i take the kids there to the park or to um show them around the school like oh yeah this is where i did this at and it's always fun to see people like walking by and looking in the gym and like seeing what the gym looks like it's just very open to the community as well as the students it's like even in the summertime, Grant Park and Grant School is like a place where everyone goes to hang out and like people bring their families to. You have like little park hangouts and social distancing hangouts. Like during um, COVID, I think I went to Grant once and there's like a family having like a social distance lunch in the park, which was like so cool just to see how other people besides students mm -hmm. use the space and how Salem architects like I don't know how they thought about that and how like this space is not grant is like a very popular space so they um built it around the community and the students which was like super cool awesome well that's great to hear yeah yeah and that's a great segue into the next question uh, okay. for Carol yeah. but yeah <laughs> <laughs> during the the design and engagement process um we did hear time and time again from the community how important Grant High School was to the neighborhood and to the broader community. So including the significance of its relationship to Grant Park. And we often heard that the community actually didn't distinguish a difference between Grant and Grant Park, um, but really saw it as one. So I'm curious if you've noticed if the new building has impacted the broader Grant community and if so, how? Yeah, the, the, the front of the campus was always kind of a hub of activity. There was that community, there's community garden there. 
Um, and then there was a lot of soccer and different uh, little smaller kids kind of activities going on in the front lawn. And that was one of the things that the community, I think they provided input, please don't get rid of the front lawn. You know, we were talking about parking and all that stuff um, because that was really used a lot in the spring and summer. Um, and then the, the property that we um, share with uh, Portland Parks, the, the bowl area um, is always a hub of activity as well. There's the community members like during the day that are jogging, walking and exercising in the, in the Grant Bowl. Um, but the way that the building was, as you showed in the video, was very disjointed. And there, we, there were a lot of buildings in the back that had cut off access for our students and for the community to actually be anywhere in the back of Grant other than in the bowl. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cut off. The baseball field was back there. But so, um, I mean, what I saw in the, when I was there, when we opened back up is that there were people utilizing the paths, the concrete walking paths uh, that went from uh, US Grant Place all the way through to the park, or you could go behind the uh, Grant, uh, the school and go through there by the arts building into the park. Uh, there were people utilizing that upper field. Um, uh, there was a line of sight from the building, the main building, all the way to the bowl and all the way to the park. There was nothing blocking it. There's no parking back there anymore. So it really felt like a safe, a much safer place um, to be. Um, it, it was, was it unusual to see families kind of strolling through that back area, even during the school day, mm -hmm. as well as in the early evening, you know, before it got dark. I think if they ever get lights back there, it'll probably be used until the lights go out um, <laughs> because it, it is like uh, now it's, it has become a really connected to the park. The school campus almost feels like it includes the park. The fence is gone, you know, and um, I think that has made it a lot safer too. Um, for people feel much safer hanging out back there. It's cleaner. There's places to sit. There's benches. I mean, it it feel it is like a park like setting back there. All right. So our last question for both of you um, is: What are your favorite spaces in the building, and why? <laughs> So hard. <laughs> I know you've named a few already. But. Yeah. I think um, mine is the gym. I just spend so much time there. I honestly think it's just beautiful. Um, it was really funny because I was actually at a basketball game last night and the seats on the far side of the gym, that's like only a couple rows, like maybe six rows, those were pulled out a little bit. And usually like staff sits over there and like teachers and stuff. And um, me and my friend went over there and they're like, oh yeah, you guys can see here, you're Grant alum. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like that's a little joke. So it was like, I like the gym a lot. I spend literally so much time in there. Like it's, I feel like it's my, my space at the school. So yeah, and all this is like a weird one, but I really like the office. Like, I feel like I like how all, um, all like the ad administration's um, offices are in there. If you need to find someone, that's like the spot you can go to. I was in there a lot for like race board printing and my coach had an office in there. She also worked at the front desk. So I was always late to school. So I was in that office so much. So I really enjoyed the office, which is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Carol? Um, well, aside from everything I've already mentioned already, I mean, there's there's so many places to appreciate for different reasons, so many spots. Um, one thing I think we haven't talked about is the library, um, uh, the location of the library, and then the way that it's designed, and with the windows, the, there's private seating. It's a very welcoming, nice place to go um, with, with comfortable seating, um, and then the windows looking out over you know, the bike, there's the bike rack there, but looking out onto the fields in the back, it's just a beautiful setting. I've had, we had a lot of meetings in there and everyone always commented on how, uh, how nice it was in there, how welcoming it, it felt and, and the view out those windows um, is, is really nice. Um, and of course, for, you know, for, for the, the whole, one of the equity things that I think really uh, was phenomenal to me was, was the commons. Again, we talked about that, but getting rid of that cafeteria in the basement 
and put, put pulling that up into the more cent centrally located. There's so many, so many things and where they're located. Maddie mentioned SEI and, and just intentional ways that things are situated that created more equity for students and um, got rid of, of some of the stigmas that were that existed in grant um, before in, in the old structure. So, you know, for the future, I hope that it, it, all, it feels like a lot like a blank slate too, though. There's a lot of blank walls and a lot of uh, areas where there's opportunity for students to um, continue to put their, their um, signature on uh, the grant campus. I can't thank the two of you, Carol, Maddie, enough for being here with us today and really sharing your fabulous, fabulous insights. Uh, we really enjoyed hearing from you. We truly appreciate you spending the time with us to learn more about Grant. It's meant the world and, and we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you too, Maddie. Yeah, you too.